welcome back to another video. Tonight's video is going to focus on the preparation of a complex which contains cobalt-1. Cobalt-1 is very unusual, and this complex is even more unusual in the fact that it can stay stable, albeit under an inert atmosphere, for a few months at a time. This synthesis is fairly simple, and only requires a few ingredients. Let's go over those. The main reactants are sodium borohydride on the left, triphenylphosphine, and cobalt-2 chloride hexahydrate. The amounts that we'll need for this are 50 milligrams of sodium borohydride. However, if you need to use more, that won't affect the reaction in any negative way. For triphenylphosphine, you will need 1.6 grams. And finally, for the cobalt-2 chloride hexahydrate, 0.48 grams of the solid will be needed. As the solvent for the reaction, I'm going to use 30 milliliters of denatured ethanol. This is about 95% ethanol, or greater. We want to exclude water for this synthesis, as it can mess things up a little bit. So, let's get to the first step, which entails dissolving both the triphenylphosphine and cobalt-2 chloride hexahydrate in hot ethanol. Here, on the hot plate stirrer, I have a 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. To this, I'm going to add a medium-sized stir bar. Perfect. Now, I'm going to add the 30 milliliters of 95% ethanol. It doesn't particularly matter in what order you add the reagents, so I'm going to add the cobalt 2 chloride hexahydrate first. We can see the beautiful blue color of the cobalt 2 chloride dissolving in the ethanol. Let's take a closer look. If we turn on stirring, we can see this a little bit better. Very nice. Now, I'm going to add the triphenylphosphine. After I add the triphenylphosphine, I'm going to heat the mixture to 65 degrees Celsius. Everything should dissolve at this point, but if it hasn't, additional ethanol may be added. Upon heating and mixing, this will form an intermediate complex, which is called triphenylphosphine cobalt-2 chloride. This has a light blue color, which will be seen once heating has been started. to do now that the temperature has reached 67 degrees, I'm going to take it off the hot plate and let it cool down to 30 degrees Celsius. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and weigh out the 50 milligrams of sodium borohydride. It may seem amazing to you that this small of an amount of borohydride 
may be able to reduce all of the cobalt 2 to cobalt 1. Now, it might not be able to. This is my first time doing this, so we'll both see. If it doesn't reduce it all the way, then I will add more borohydride until I'm satisfied. But for now, I'm going to start with this. The solution of the cobalt triphenylphosphine chloride complex is successfully cooled down to 30 degrees Celsius, which is the target temperature. So, with slow stirring, I'm going to add the 50 milligrams of borohydride. We will see a little bit of gas evolution, which is a trivial amount of hydrogen and an even smaller amount of borane gas. We will also see the brown precipitate of the cobalt-1 complex, the formula of which will show up on screen right now. This clump of brown material you can see on the top is actually our complex, funnily enough. So what's happening here is the aforementioned cobalt-2 triphenylphosphine chloride complex forms an intermediate and highly unstable complex with the sodium borohydride. This then is reduced further down to cobalt-1, which we saw as the brown powder at the bottom of the Erlenmeyer flask. As we can also see, there is a blue color remaining, which means there is unreduced cobalt still in solution. So I'm going to add further borohydride until it is nearly colorless. This seems to be getting a little warm, so I'm going to put it in a small water bath. The next step entails filtering the mixture to obtain the solid cobalt-1 complex. The Erlenmeyer flask is washed one or two times with cold ethanol. The filtrate should be clear for the most part. Here's the final product, a brown malodorous powder which contains cobalt in the plus one oxidation state. I really hope you enjoyed. You can like if you want to, subscribe if you want to, and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Very big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Videos like this would be impossible to make without their support. So, thank you.